So you are thinking about going out to a restaurant again, finally, but you're terrified to do so. <laughs> Can you even eat at a restaurant today and be safe and protect yourself from getting sick? I'm here to help you out. It's better that you know the truth than to be in denial. I'm here to tell you what really goes down behind the scenes. And hopefully with the tips I'm about to give you, you can be as safe as possible if you choose to eat in a restaurant. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am the Curiosity Guru. I focus on health and wellness and the overall enhancement of our well-being. If it's here to better your life and help you grow as a person or support your health or a peaceful environment in which you can thrive, that's what I'm all about. I also have a separate playlist where I talk about film and video production because I do come from a film and television background. Let's get into the video. <sighs> I'm not prepared to go back myself because I know too much. That being said, there are so many restaurant owners right now that are really actively trying to enforce regulations and be as conscientious as possible to protect your health. Let me also give you a disclaimer. I am not a doctor. I am not a microbiologist. You need to consult your own healthcare professional and do research yourself. However, I have worked many years as a health reporter. My mother did field epidemiology work. She did contact tracing. She reported back to the CDC. I really have a perspective that is quite different than most people. And the restaurants I've worked in have all been very high-end, fine dining. All that means is high-end restaurants are supposed to be the best. You're supposed to have the best technique, the best chef, the best hygiene, the best cleanliness, right? And I'm telling you, the things I'm going over today have happened at every single restaurant I have ever worked, bar none, without question. I guarantee you it happens at places that aren't fine dining. What we're doing here is we're playing the odds. It's a numbers game. We are reducing as many possible methods of exposure. First on the list is, dude, wear your mask. I know you are worried about an employee at a restaurant getting you sick. However, it's more likely that you are going to get them sick. Why? Because they're doing everything to protect you. They all have masks on, they all have gloves on, all to protect you. But you are coming in there without a mask, literally breathing into the server's face every time they come up to you. So it's really, really important that you do your part as a patron because what you don't want is one of the servers at a restaurant to get sick and now they come back to work the next day and they're sick and they're spreading it to the public. We don't want that to happen. Goes without saying, sit outside if you can. I would suggest, for one, wear your mask until you are seated and it's time to eat. I know you don't have to, but do it. Why would you sit in the lobby for 15 or 20 minutes waiting for your table without a mask on? One, you're now breathing into the air, but two, you're breathing in everybody else's exhaust who doesn't have a mask on. You don't know who was there before you. You're putting yourself at risk, to be quite honest. We know a few things, okay, about coronavirus in particular. We know that your normal breath extends about six feet in front of you. The weight of those droplets fall. It's heavy and it brings it to the ground. If you sneeze or you cough or you yell or you shout or you're singing, it'll go 18 to 20 feet from you. Now, the six foot rule applies when the moisture in your mouth is wet. As soon as those droplets hit the ground or the table or the couch and the water evaporates, at that point they are now particles. They're like dust. It's still live virus. And every time the door opens, somebody walks by, there's a gust of wind, it brings those particles back up into the air. That is how and why this can be aerosolized as well as just the droplets that land in front of you. You can be breathing virus particles from somebody who was way across the building if it was an instance in which it was aerosolized and you, because you can't see it, you never know when those conditions are occurring. If you're really concerned, look at the menu online and when you're seated, tell your server, I already know what I'm gonna order. Now they're supposed to be providing you with disposable paper menus, hopefully they're doing it. Bring your own straw. I cannot emphasize this enough. Let me tell you what goes down in restaurants. We get these straws 
in a big old box and and the cardboard goes all the way up to here and then the very top of the straws are sticking out so when it's time to refill the straws we have to grab them by the top and pull them out of the box you can't reach your hand down in the box and grab the straw from the middle and even if I did or was able to grab a straw from the middle now when I put that straw in your drink it is now submerged in the middle of the liquid, the middle of the straw where I touched. So in either case, you don't want people touching the straws that are either going in your mouth or in your drink. I would ask your server, hey, do you guys have any paper wrap straws? I would suggest bringing your own straw. They have collapsible straws with a little silicone tip. You can get them on Amazon. They come in a little carry case. Here's the other one. You ready for it? No garnishes. No, I'm, no, no garnishes. I will not allow garnishes on my drinks when I eat out. I'm specifically talking about like lemons and limes or oranges, but here's what's happening. They're being touched by hands. Now, supposedly the bartender or the bar back is wearing gloves when they cut the fruit and they put it in their little container. That's fine. But when it's time to take that lime and actually put it on your glass, how many times have you ever observed a bartender with a pair of tongs? grab the lemon with tongs and place it on your glass with tongs. If you're finding this video helpful and useful, go ahead and subscribe. Like, hit the bell icon so you know when a new video comes out because this way I know to continue to make more content like this for you. And the worst is like when you order a lemonade and they drop the lemon in the glass and they don't put it on the rim. Now, I have had many a conversation with bartenders about this, and they've given me a lot of flack for it. They're like, but we wash our hands way more than servers. You don't understand. As a bartender, I'm constantly washing my hands, rinsing things off. My hands are wet and washed 50,000 times a night. I'm like, uh-huh. And you're touching money 50,000 times a night because every other customer is paying you with cash or they're tipping you a dollar. They are touching money as much as they are washing their hands. I don't like garnishes on my drinks and I don't want somebody touching my straw. Don't get the garnishes. Just don't do it. Now, if we're talking about like um, maraschino cherries, onions, or olives, those are wet things. Those they use tongs and they drop them in the drink. Nobody sticks their hand in and grabs those. That's not an issue. Even worse, if your server has to, for some reason, go cut those garnishes. <laughs> Okay, when they make servers garnish their own drinks, you are in a rush, right? You're trying to deal with your tables, you're trying to, you're at the computer, you're trying to put in food, you're trying to remember this, you're trying to remember that, and somebody goes, your drinks are up, and you're like, oh, and you're pressured by your manager. You have to get to the bar immediately and drop what you're doing and go get those drinks because the ice cubes are melting and the server standing behind you is pressuring you to hurry up because their drinks are up in front of you and you just need to get them and get out of the way. Nobody is gonna say, oh wait, hold on a second, leave the bar, go all the way back into the kitchen, wash their hands, come back to the bar just so they can pick up the lemon or the lime and put it on the glass and bring it out to their table. And you think they're gonna do that with every single table every time drinks come up? Are there supposed to be tongs? Are there supposed to be this? Yes, but what I'm telling you is what really happens until we get through this situation, I would order bottled drinks. Now, if you get something in a can, I would keep hand sanitizer with you. Just put Put a little bit on your napkin and wipe off the top and the lip of the can because you never know where somebody grabbed or touched that can or when they open the can for you if they touch the part where your mouth is going to go. Now when it comes to water, I still trust the bottled water poured into a glass more than I trust the tap water and let me tell you why. The issue are the water pitchers. These water pitchers don't really get washed, people. They get rinsed out all the time. But does anybody stand there with a scrub brush and soap and scrub out these water pitchers every single day? No, it doesn't happen. And in all the restaurants that I've worked at, I've actually never seen the water pitchers hit the dish pit. Well, of course, the water pitchers in a restaurant are going to be metal. I'm showing you with a glass one. But here's what happens. When you have to fill up a water pitcher, you fill that sucker all the way up to the top. There's no reason to fill it two thirds of the way or halfway full. You are busy. So what people do, particularly the bussers, is they'll grab two or three water pitchers and they fill them all up at the sink, all the way to the top. And then they're grabbing them with their hands like this and they're putting them back on the, on the busser station. When you grab a full water pitcher, okay, 
you, you grab it with the handle, but the weight pulls it down. You can't hold it straight until you put your thumb here as a rest. Okay, so now what's happening? My thumb is stabilizing this heavy water pitcher and I'm carrying it back to the table. And as I am walking, the motion of the water is sloshing all over my thumb. In other words, people's thumbs are being dipped into your water pitcher and then they're pouring the water at your table and every other table. This just happens constantly. It just is what it is. It's the ergonomics of carrying one of these things when they're full. If you aren't at a fine dining establishment or whatever, then you can just buy a plastic bottle of water or whatever. And in certain restaurants that aren't as high end, you can just bring the water with you. Now, I don't think any restaurant managers are going to be too upset that I told you about this because they make more money when you pay for bottled water. So really, it's a win-win. Here's one you're probably not going to want to hear, but you know what? Sometimes you need a truth pill. Don't order iced tea. Oh God, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what the restaurant is. Don't, just don't, don't ever. Just, that's a no, that's a no. Unless the iced tea is like behind the bar and it comes out of the gun at the bar, then that's fine, okay? Or if it's a place where it's self-serve and you go up to the fountain and you get your own soda and you get your own tea, you're good to go. I'm talking about the tea where they have it in the pitcher and they pour it in the glass and they bring the glass to your table. <clears throat> Guys, those iced tea pitchers never get cleaned, ever. I'm telling you. Not the pitcher like this. No, the way they make the iced tea, they're these big, huge metal containers, right? Like the, like the mega-sized ones. And the iced tea is made in there. You're supposed to, at the end of the night, dump all the iced tea out of this 50 pound pitcher, however much it weighs, 20 pounds, it's heavy, okay? In theory, it should be washed and cleaned. I'm telling you, nobody sits there with a brush and soap and scrubs the inside of these iced tea pitchers and then grabs a hose and rinses it out and gets all the soap out. It doesn't happen. For one, the little stations that servers have in the back of a restaurant, they're normal sized sinks. We don't have tools and scrub brushes and hoses with water, like that's over at the dish pit. At most, they're gonna take a pitcher of water and pour it on the inside of the iced tea thing and then dump it out and rinse it out that way. Now, I suppose there is the occasional restaurant that'll run that big pitcher through the dish pit. I have never seen that happen. Also, the lid that goes on top of the iced tea thing, it isn't washed even when they rinse out the iced tea container, okay? And the little nozzle or the spigot where the stuff comes out, doesn't get washed. The point is, iced tea, <sighs> don't order the iced tea. I would wipe off your silverware. Bring your hand sanitizer with you. Wipe off your silverware before you eat. I used to get teased so bad by fellow employees and even managers because I would wash silverware. If we had to taste something new that the chef made and they would hand everybody a fork, I would be, uh-uh. I would go straight to the sink, wash it off with soap and water. Now, here's the deal with the silverware. And the problem comes with polishing the silverware. In nicer establishments, obviously, they're going to polish the silverware and polish the plates. The whole purpose of it is to remove water spots so that it looks cleaner to you. If you go to a restaurant where they just put the glasses on the table and they're full of water spots, yes! Those are the glasses you want to drink out of because nobody has touched the inside of those glasses. I am thrilled if I see water spots on the silverware or on the glass, I feel so much better. So here's the deal with the polishing. Typically you have to do side work before a restaurant opens. Sometimes the busser polishes, sometimes the server polishes. They never give you enough time to do your side work before the restaurant actually opens because they're trying to cut back on labor costs. So typically what happens is the restaurant opens, you're not finished with your side work. You run out, you greet somebody, you take an order, you run back, you polish some silverware. It's a constant back and forth. A majority of the night is whether you're doing it or the busser's doing it. That rag, <sighs> gets wet with water. You don't put sanitizer or chemicals on it. That's not what they put on it. It's just water. Now, that rag gets set on the table wherever the silverware and the plates are. You hope that table is clean and has been sanitized. 
okay? And then whoever's coming back grabs it with their hands. Do you really think they're washing their hands every time they grab the polishing rag? I would have to leave my table, take my gloves off, wash my hands, pick up the rag, polish four forks, and then somebody's calling me, your drinks are ready, set it down, deliver the drinks, come back again, wash my hands, take the gloves off, polish some more plates, put on a new set of gloves. I would be going through a hundred pairs of gloves a night. So what I'm telling you is it doesn't happen. It's that same wet rag. Plus, when you leave and you go to check on a table, you don't know who has picked up that rag after you because another server might walk by and see a little polishing station and go, oh, I haven't finished my side work yet. And they grab the same rag and they knock a few out. So now their hands have touched the rag, your hands have touched the rag, the busser's hands have touched the rag. You don't know whose hands are clean and whose hands aren't clean. Now you might be worried about the cleanliness of plates and silverware in general at restaurants. That I wouldn't be. When they come through the dishwasher, they are clean. They are high pressure washed, they are put through the dishwasher, it's super high temperature, and it's also dipped in a chemical sanitation solution. This one is a big one, guys, and this has nothing to do with the pandemic. I just do this in general. Order hot food, if possible whatever microorganisms might be on that food, whether it is from a sick employee, maybe it's flu season, or maybe there's salmonella or E. coli. High temperature cooking typically kills most of that. It's, you're probably not gonna get sick, but when stuff is room temperature, you don't know. Let's say everybody in the kitchen did exactly what they're supposed to do. You know, they're not cross-contaminating with their cutting boards between meat and veggies. Those are actually, restaurants are pretty good about that. Knives are clean, the countertop is clean, everything but everything but everything is how it's supposed to be. When they're in a rush, people tend to grab their hands and things and just throw them on there when they're not supposed to. Let's say they prepared your salad properly, but you send it back to the kitchen. I asked for no bell pepper. And if they're slammed at the kitchen, you might have the server grabbing and putting the extra things on your plate. Or you might have somebody in one part of the kitchen that doesn't normally work in salads do it. So even when things are prepared with the best of intentions, sometimes hands go into containers and things get put on your plate. I don't like to take the risk. If you're really, really concerned about people touching things at your table, you might not want your server or the manager to open the bottle of wine for you. So just tell them that you prefer to cork your own wine. You might say like, oh, look, I know you have a $30 corkage fee, that's fine, I'll pay it, but I prefer to cork my own wine. See, I brought my own wine key. Oh, that's another thing. Ice buckets aren't washed out either. They're rinsed, but they are not washed. To-go boxes. Okay, that's my biggest pet peeve, I swear. I don't like to-go, and it's not because I have a problem with the food, the food is probably fine. It's the people touching my to-go container. I don't want your grimy little hands in my to-go container. Here's what's supposed to happen when you get takeout or you know when you're ready to leave. They're supposed to take the takeout boxes, they're supposed to be turned upside down and like stacked in a pile. And you go up to it and you grab it from the bottom and you take it off and you turn it over without touching the inside. You scrape people's food in it and then you use the little flaps without touching the inside to close it off. That's what's supposed to happen. I can tell you what does happen is they just grab the box. And in order for the box to not slip out of their hands, they grab it like this on the inside. And when they're closing the flaps, they're touching the flaps as they're closing them. So their fingers are on the inside of where your food is. It happens constantly. Most of the time, this isn't gonna be an issue. This is a lower risk situation. But nonetheless, sometimes you're gonna have contaminated hands and they just now put their fingers in where your food is. I will say to the server, hey, if you don't mind, I prefer to package my own box. You can bring me the box, but I'll package it up myself. I would not use the bathroom unless you have to, guys. Unless it's an emergency, fine. That's what the bathroom is there for. But otherwise, don't use the bathroom. There are multiple reasons for this. Now, typically restaurants have a cleaning crew overnight that come in and they deep clean things. You're trusting that they do a good job of it, but the bathrooms are typically cleaned. During the day when the restaurant is open, they're not. I mean, at best, they might have the hostess go down and like do some pickup in the bathroom so it doesn't look messy, but it's not sanitation cleaned while the restaurant is open. One of my biggest concerns is the air dryers, okay? You should absolutely 
Use towels to dry your hands off. Wipe your hands on your shirt if you have to. Use toilet paper, do whatever you have to do. Do not use those air dryers on the wall. Restaurants aren't supposed to be using them right now, but they might. And here's the reason why. If you don't properly wash your hands, or let's say you properly washed your hands, but you have coronavirus and you're coughing all over everything, those particles are on your shirt, they're on your hair, they're on your skin, they're on you. You put your hands in that high powered dryer and it is basically blowing with force all of the moisture off your hands, any of the particles that are on your shirt, everything is becoming aerosolized. You don't wanna do that to other people and you don't know who was in that bathroom before you. If you're concerned about how dirty money is and touching money and all of that, have your tips set aside in advance for valet and for your server. Have that set aside in an envelope so all you have to do is leave the envelope on the table. I've had people do that for me and I thought, ah, oh, what a great idea. I would, if I were you, leave the kids at home. And here's the reason why. Kids just don't know any better. They don't understand hygiene. They'll be like, but I washed my hands. Yes, honey, you did. You washed your hands. And right after you washed your hands, you touched the doorknob, you touched the seatbelt, you opened the door to the restaurant, you grabbed a pit, you touched everything in sight after you washed your hands. If anyone is likely to inadvertently pick up something in a restaurant casually without knowing it's gonna be a child. And this is a key one, key guys, go when it's slow. Like, I mean as in when the restaurant just opened, like five o'clock, make your reservation. What if you happen to be at a place that's big, like a cheesecake factory? So what, there's a six foot rule or the restaurant is only at 50% capacity. You still might have 200 people in a massively huge enclosed space that are separated without their masks on. You wanna be breathing that? If you go when it's five o'clock, it might just be you and like one other table in the restaurant. And the benefit is the restaurant just opened. If you go at eight or nine o'clock, you've had hours of people before you sitting in there without their masks on. If you go when it opens, nobody was in there before you got there except the staff who's wearing their masks. Also, when you first go in, everything has been cleaned and wiped down and sanitized perfectly in preparation for your arrival. I would also park your own car. That's right. You don't want valet up in your car. You don't know what's going on with them. So just tell the valet, hey, listen, I'm a little bit concerned with the situation with the coronavirus and all of that. I prefer to valet my own car. I know the valet fee is $15. Here, I'm paying you the valet fee. Here you go. Most of the time they will accommodate you if you approach it that way. So guys, these things are really simple to do, actually, if you think about it. It doesn't require that much effort on your part. It just requires awareness. If you can, sit outside. Wait outside before you're seated. Try to wear your mask until you're at the table. Bring your own straw, guys. Wipe down your silverware with sanitizer. Ask to package to-go food yourself. Don't go to the bathroom unless you have to. Try to order bottled drinks and bottled water. Skip the garnishes stay away from iced tea. Order hot food, go when the restaurant first opens. And so if you do choose to go out right now and eat at a restaurant, enjoy it. There are so many of us who haven't been to a restaurant in so long right now that if you do that, just savor the moment and have a good time. I'm the Curiosity Guru. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.